This is Folkestone, a typical English coastal town that is the official starting line for many a great van life adventure. It's also home to this, the Channel Tunnel. This is where you drive your van onto a train that goes under the sea and transports you the 32 miles from Folkestone in England to Calais in France. And this is me, stupidly overexcited to be doing this journey once again. Almost three years ago, we set out to build ourselves a camper van that would predominantly take us around Europe. And Fanny the van, well, she agrees. So much so, in fact, that every time we take her out here, she does her utmost best not to return home. Now, so far, due to COVID restrictions and it being the wrong time of year, we have only ever gone south. But the plan, the original plan, was to go in a different direction altogether. Right then, good morning folks and welcome to Belgium. And we're going too fast, we're going too fast. So we are going north. North Wood Bound is where we're going to the land of the midnight sun. Can you tell by my face? I'm very, very excited. This is the trip we have wanted to do for such a long time. Oh, it's exciting. So I'm just going to show you where we parked up because there's absolutely no need for me to be driving around on this scooter now that I've tested it, apart from the fact it's really fun and I'm in Europe so I can. First, before I show you where we're parked, here she is, apple of my life. Obviously. I'm trying to work, Louise. So it's the Jubilee Bank Holiday weekend and my wife is working both days all the time, aren't you? I am, yes. I'm so busy, so busy. So Emily works in the events industry, so as you can understand, I don't know why I'm wearing sunglasses and doors, it look all right, not standard. Um, yes, you're really, really busy, aren't you? So Yeah. But, but this evening, we're going to go to where we're going? Rouge. <laughs> Ooh, <sh> <laughs> <speak> well. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to leave Emily to crack on doing whatever it is she's doing, getting very excited about Bruges. I'll quickly show you the town we're in and the park up because it's quite a cool little park up and then yeah, we'll see you in Bruges after that I guess. See you there! Is that more emails? That is, yeah. You might not. So the first thing to notice about this car park is it's pretty busy. So there's a lot of vans in here and I think that's because it's conveniently placed. It's about, I don't know, an hour and 20 minutes, hour and a half from the tunnel. And welcome back to the continent. There is a water fill up point. So yeah, it's been really good. So we've had a few, quite a few English vans, noticing a lot more British vans out here this time than any other time we've been. Probably because time of year and also because of COVID. But we've got some friends. So over in the corner there, our friends Willow and Kevin, we know them from before. So we spent a good few hours having a chin wag. Uh, but check this out about this park up. So this is like the tourist information screen. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but it's touch screen and you can just kind of swipe. I mean, it's all in bloody Dutch, Flemish. I don't understand a word of it, but how cool is that? It's like a giant iPhone just plonked in the middle of the car park. So you've got your church, pretty standard for any European town. Cool little church, main street. And then just behind me there, you've got the rest of the town. There's not much here, a couple of little shops and a suit shop, it's like a fancy, a formal dress shop, really, randomly in the middle of nowhere. But yeah, really, really clean, really, really neat and tidy. I think, I don't know, it all looks brand new, so maybe they're rejuvenating it, because you can see that a lot of work's been going on. But ideal little stopover if you're just getting off or about to get back on the tunnel, so perfect for like a travel day. But we're not staying, like I say, and we are going to Bruges. And that is where we'll pick you up I don't know, in a couple of hours when she's finished emailing and ranting and waffling on the phone and whatnot. So I'll see you in Bruges. <laughs> it's a busy town, that shot was not easy. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, nearly lost it to a car as well. <laughs> or a horse and car, or a scooter, or a bike. Oh, Bruce is busy. We have just arrived in Bruges. It's very, very busy, but we'll do our best. But we're on the hunt for, what is it, a chocolate shop, a waffle shop? 
and more chocolate shops and more chocolate shops and i think we're going to succeed because it looks like there's a fair few you're going to be in your element and look i can't i don't even want to talk to you because there's too much <laughs> about sorry apologies for that folks she uh, she will talk to you in a bit i'm sure i'm sure she'll have some fun facts once she stuffed her little face <laughs> I'm sorry, but how could we not eat some of this chocolate, right? And the waffles. There's, there's no way, no way. I'm guessing Belgium's going to be expensive. We was expecting Norway to be expensive, but I think Belgium might be the expensive, expensive stop on this trip. I think she could be right. <laughs> Look at this window, I'm not even joking you, this is, this is heaven. You having some of that? Obviously. They're everywhere. And then a waffle shop here. This, I'm not leaving, I'm never leaving. <laughs> That's it, you want to move to Bruges? That's it, I'm done. This is my home. Although Belgium, Bruges is famous for its chocolate. A lot of it is imported due to the amount of tourists that has it. It can't cope with the demand. So they're faking it. Stay up, fake it till you make it, baby. <laughs> Bruges is often compared to Venice, and that being said, it has 80 bridges connecting all of its canal works, which makes it really easy to get around as being a tourist. We're going on a boat. No, you just got to walk over the bridge, Louise. Mm. That's why there's 80 of them. Listen to the facts. Boring. No, they're not. <laughs> they're good facts. They are, they're very good facts. Very, very, very good fun facts. That's why they're called fun facts, because they're so fun. Yeah. Where are we going? That way? Go that way. Maybe someday when I've grown older, I can see it all clear from above. Looking back on it all. Maybe I can see what was broken Ooh, but it's a lonely calling Yeah, it's a lonely calling So Bruges is definitely a really, really cool place to visit. Lots of hustle and bustle, very, very busy. You've got to have your wits about you because I've been hacked down by at least two cyclists. Two cyclists and a few horses. And it does not bode well for where we're going after here, but we'll see how we get on. But yeah, definitely, definitely put it on your list if you're passing. If you're going, uh, if you're going north, you're going to be going past anyway, and it's well worth a bit of a visit. <laughs> it's another flipping horse and garage. AJ loves them. AJ does like them. So it's about seven o'clock at night. We've just found the main square, and it is heaving, isn't it? I know. It's, do you know what? It's actually really nice to see. Oh, because yeah, because we've only travelled in COVID. Whenever we've come anywhere like this, it's been really quiet. You're quite liking the old uh, atmosphere and hustle and bustle. Uh, yeah, you? I am that type of person. I do like a little bit of like atmosphere. I, however, cannot stand it and would like to go back to the olden days, the good old days when there was no one out and about. <laughs> Shut up! You're such a grumpy old man. <laughs> oh. Another horse and cart. They will run you over. Obviously, we've stopped for a waffle. Look, how can you not, right? When in Belgium and all that. Exactly, and then tomorrow when I have my next waffle, <laughs> I'm going to have it at the comb. <laughs> can you do that? Yeah, that was in that little shop. Oh, you've eyed it up already? Yeah. So this little stroll out into Bruges was clearly just a, a recon for Emily's, <laughs> Emily's collection of uh, chocolates and waffles and God knows what else tomorrow. Is that right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Look, it is what it is, Louise. Just deal with it, all right? So the pipe on this glass represents a brewery. When it expanded and moved out of Bruges, it still runs some pipes underneath the ground. There's three pipes, one for the beer, one for the water in, and one for the water out. That's pretty cool, right? So there's literally beer running under the, or there was literally beer running under the streets, apparently. That one, that one is a fun fact. A I'll fun give you that one, that one's fun. Thank you. Oh, you're going to chocolate. Oh, it's in the pot. Oh, okay, lovely, thank you. I got scared it didn't have my chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good. Oh my god. Look at that. This is gonna be so good. Look at your little face. <laughs> <It's excited. laughs> So apparently 
Emily wasn't satisfied with her waffle because it wasn't <laughs> quite warmed up enough. So apparently we're coming back in the morning for breakfast, which is no problem because we're staying on an air just out of town. So we'll show you all that tomorrow. But you're on the hunt for what now? Fritz. <laughs> She wants to get some chips on top. Never mind, we've had dinner. We had dinner before we came. We only came out <laughs> for pudding. Don't tell them that. Greed is what it is, greed. <laughs> I'm overexcited. I just, I love all the food. Apparently he thinks I share chips, but with two forks, we all know I don't. <laughs> God. Happy now? Yeah, I'm very happy now, yes. And on that note, I think we'll leave it there because I've now got to walk the dog and carry the camera because <laughs> someone's stuffing their face with their second dinner. Uh, I'm on holiday. <laughs> You're not on holiday? <laughs> Unbelievable. We'll see you tomorrow. Right, press stop because I can't, because I got the dog Aww. on the top, on the top. That's it. Right then, good morning folks from a very sunny and a very noisy Bruges. So I'm just gonna very quickly show you this air because it is ideally placed for a visit to Bruges. So it's pretty big and it's situated between two of the little canals that run through uh, Bruges city centre. Really, really nice park up, quite noisy, quite busy. A lot of vans, a lot of vans. I did stick the drone up to do my best to show you it, but I got attacked by <laughs> several angry oyster catchers and I wouldn't want to hurt any birds, so I brought it back down. Emily has had a pretty busy morning. She's been doing a workout, mostly to burn off those extra chips. And because she's going back, she's got on the way into town now to get herself a second waffle, because you know, when in Belgium and all that. There's two trains of thought in our van hold. There's Emily, who would rather do the exercise, burn it off so that she can eat the extra treats. And then there's me, who'd rather just go without because I can't be asked to do the exercise to burn off the extra treats. It is just a really short walk into the town centre as well, about, I don't know, 10 minutes maybe. You follow the river along, really, really pretty. Do a left and then you're pretty much in that old town straight away. So perfect for exploring the city. Just behind me there, you've got your usual grey waste toilet emptying point, and I'll show you how big this one is. There are 57 spaces in all, so that is quite a sizeable air. It is expensive. I think it's cost us 25 euros for 24 hours. In the off season, it's 19 euros. There are other options looking on park for night in the city centre, but it's us, and we was leaving summer behind, so we wanted the van to be somewhere relatively safe. And because of the sheer volume of vanners here, I think this one is pretty safe. So yeah, if you want to visit cities, it can get a little bit costly, but you know, it is what it is. Have a look at this. How cool is that bus conversion? That's bloody awesome. If you're looking for somewhere for breakfast, if you know, if after 25 euros, you've still got money to burn, there's some like boats along the river, like big restaurant boats. So they look pretty cool as well. So it's a decent stop actually for a city park up. It ain't half bad, but we're not staying because I can't afford it for two nights, so we're going to hit the road as soon as Emily gets back from a little trip into town. Now this is what I'm talking about. None of that cold crap that they tried to give me yesterday. Oh. Old look inside, wasn't he? No, is he? Is he? No. Right then, good morning, folks, from Breeder. Now, we was not planning to stay in Breeder at all. We finally, after, I don't know, two and a half years of doing this? Yep. Got like the proper knock. So we have been like moved on during the day before, but we got moved on at night. But before we go on, whatever you do, when you're in Holland, because that's where we are now, we're in Holland, do not buy this. It's not milk. This is, uh, what was it? Buttermilk. Buttermilk, and it tastes like if you put it in tea. It is still milk. It's such a little whinge bag. And she doesn't know what she's talking about because I actually got that milk in Bruges. Bruges. I can't say it any other way. So the plan was yesterday, I think I said Emily was working all day. It was Friday, so you did that, didn't you? I did. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> she did that. And then we moved and we found a lovely little park up right in the forest. We really wanted to take you on a lovely hike, take AJ on a nice hike 
get titchy out for that summer for and not you. Not, well, you're both titchy, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, but when we say titchy, it means summer. Uh, get, get her out for a nice walk, stretch her legs. But unfortunately, about what, half past eight? Yeah, and that's like too late for me. Do you know what I mean? I was like, Louise! <laughs> yeah, about half past eight, we was about to do our sunset walk. Uh, we got all set up, hadn't we? And then the ranger come and moved us on. So we had to take a drive. He recommended coming to Breeder. We jumped on park for night and um, it seems this area is quite hot on getting moved on, mm -hmm. doesn't it? So yeah. we just thought well, we'll come to the designated park up. So we're in Breda, it's very noisy, it is a city, a lot's been going on. We've had um, drunks around the van, uh, we had a party boat right, on the yeah, river. Yeah, the party boat was funny though. Uh, maybe some sort of Hindu or something. So we've got the river on one side, a busy road on the other side and a busy crossroads just mm. behind us. So you slept fine, didn't you? I always sleep fine, to be fair. I'm just, yeah, you could be shouting in my ear and I'd still sleep. <laughs> I, however, am convinced that someone tried to open one of the doors. Not sure if I was dreaming or if that actually happened. I probably but paranoia. I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I heard it. But anyway, anyway, that's enough of that. We're going to move on now to, well, we don't know where. We're going to try and find some, aren't we? Yeah, best get old uh, park for night up. Yeah, because it is Saturday and we do desperately want to get outside into nature as soon as we possibly can because I've had enough of this city, city van life now. And we need to go and find uh, some non-butter milk. And we need to find some milk. <laughs> so I need a cup of tea. <laughs> I think I've done well. I'm not too grumpy. No. We'll see you somewhere else. <laughs> this is more like it out in nature and hopefully we're about to go on quite a long hike and because we are in the Netherlands it is flat so I'm going to enjoy this one. Uh, I'm not because I always get to laugh at her when she has to go uphill. But anyway, first proper hike, we're very excited to go. We get a lot of questions about our hiking gear, so we're very excited to be partnering up with Revolution Race again for this video. So we particularly like the Nordwand Pro pants, which is what we're wearing now. They are super comfy because of their stretch panels and they have ventilation zips. Which is really, really handy when it is a bit warm because we like to always be in trousers in wooded areas like this in particular because of ticks. Now AJ's already picked up four on this trip so far already so we do like to wear trousers when we're out hiking. And the best part about them is they come in a short leg. They are also incredibly durable and water repellent and for times when it's a bit too wet I've got the shell pants as well which are excellent for when I'm out early in the morning, it's very damp and it keeps me dry because they're waterproof and windproof. It is coming into summer but where we're going the weather can be up and down. We've picked ourselves up a couple of these Illusion hoodies, they are strong and durable, have a nice athletic fit and are super stretchy. And what Emily failed to mention, my favourite thing about the Revolution Race stuff is the colours. The colours are really, really cool. And also on the trousers, there are so many pockets. Handy for me, do my photography because I can just chuck all the stuff in the different pockets. Or for my snacks. Or for Emily's snacks, obviously. Um, we have got you a huge discount code this time. So if you want to get some stuff for yourself, use the code CAMPERVIBE20 and that'll get you 20% off. 20%, that's which, massive. Which is massive, I've never seen it that high before. So it's valid between the 5th and the 9th of this month for UK and Irish, Irish customers, I think, i.e. Um, so yeah, go to the link in the description to check it out. Right, shall we carry on with our hike? Let's do it. So van life this time around definitely feels very, very different. It's a lot busier out here, isn't it? It is a lot busier, yeah, but maybe it's the time of year as well. Yeah, definitely the time of year and obviously COVID restrictions are far, far less now. So, and also when the Netherlands, I think they love their vans as much as we do, because mm -hmm. whenever we have been to other countries, it's generally always Dutch vans, isn't it? Yeah, that's true actually, yeah. And I think much like England, the lack of space, the popular spots like this one, it's lovely. There's some great walking around here, but it is very, very busy. Yes. <laughs> uh, we found a lovely spot right in the trees in a car park and it's ideal for AJ. AJ's loving it, but there's lots of dogs, so Summer still can't come out, so we'll probably move on again, I would think. Yeah, because she needs to come out and have a little bit of explore, doesn't she? Yeah, and sorry for the lack of driving footage, but honestly the roads, it's just like being at home, very flat. They like a wind turbine and uh, camera crew, main camera crew for the drive was asleep for most of it. So. Ah, look, I was tired. I've had a big few days. Oh yeah. Now we would love to explore more of Holland, uh, but we're just sticking to the main route going up and that is because we're trying to get up to Norway quite quickly because we're not doing the Schengen Shuffle this time. 
We could spend weeks exploring Holland on the way up there, but then we'd get to Norway and have to turn around and come back. And obviously Norway's a big place and we want to see it, don't we? Uh, yes, that is the place that we want to see most because it looks absolutely stunning. Yeah, so we're very excited to get to Norway. Uh, but before we go to Norway, we are going to Amsterdam. Now, let me know in the comments if the snack bandit who loves to snack and chill should try it like you did in Belgium. You did the Belgium waffle, didn't you? I tasted the thingy. Should she try the, the natural cuisine, native cuisine? Native cuisine. Of a space cake. Let me know in the comments, because she's saying no, but I think I think it's only right. Whatever. No. Are you doing it? Well, if it's a brownie, then I may be doing it. It's cake after all. So yeah, let us know in the comments if you think Emily should check that out in Amsterdam. I'll definitely capture it on film for you, for sure. Such a cow bag, isn't she? Also, I don't know if you've noticed it in the footage, have you seen this? Emily's helipad landing forehead has attracted a few mosquitoes again, so look at that view. It's really itchy as well, but I was a bit too late with the uh, Skin So Soft Avon stuff. But yeah, they've got me already. And to any of our followers in Norway, we're getting mixed reports about the amount of gnats, mosquitoes and midges that might be there, so let us know, because actually don't let us know because you'll panic and not go. <laughs> actually scrap that, in fact if you... If you could just, or all the Norwegians, if you could just say they're not there and then she can't duck out. I can hear you. No, you can't. One of the main reasons really though that we're heading north is because if we go south, it's just going to be far, far, far too hot. Yeah, and Ajo and Summer just are not used to that type of heat. And to be fair, neither are we. It was like 25 yesterday and we struggled. <laughs> we did really struggle. But the main reason, the honest reason, is because of the scenery and the drone shot potential. So I know there's not been a lot of drone in this, but it's just too busy everywhere. So if you want to see some epic, hopefully epic, because, you know, I might crash it. We are on a European trip after all. Then be sure to subscribe, ding the bell, Give, give us, us a, a thumbs, thumbs up. up. Do all those things. Remember to give Emily some grief in the comments that she needs to eat some hash cakes in Amsterdam. You've got to try these things while you're out here. Well, you have to, don't you, I suppose? And we will see you on the next one when, yeah, we're in Amsterdam and then we continue going up. So see you then. Exciting times. Bye.